Well, yeah, I mean, you really have this this gift of introducing people, right? Showing people things that you have a vision for something. You have a vision for what's going on in the space and you realize I could show America. This is what it looks like. You have a vision for how fun it is to work with dirt. I can show my employees through an experience. This is how cool this thing is. You know, I'm curious as you're building your company. So you've got a team, you're hiring, you're imparting this passion into them. You're developing them so that you can replicate yourself because obviously this thing for you to achieve the 10 year dream, I mean, you, you've yep. got to scale and build a team. Yep. How are you keeping the reins on the culture? How are you making sure that those filters of who gets to work with your organization, mm -hmm. um, when people show up that they've got the same passion and, and really a desire to make the difference that, that you want to make? Because, yeah. you know, you just hire the wrong person and all of a sudden that impacts the culture and it it's kind of spins we, out. So we, we've done that. We've, we've learned, uh, you know, we did that a few times this year. We had to learn that lesson for the first time. But as, as we've grown, so we're, we're about uh, a little over 20 full-time people now up from we just hired number six this time last year. So it's been a lot of growth, especially in this year. Very exciting, very fortunate position that yeah. we're in. So it's, it's, it's a few things. It's one being just very honest about what we're doing. So we're putting ourselves out there, telling the story about the company, who we are, how we do it, and just getting it out there. So when they come in the door, they already know everything about us. So everyone knows everything about us from, from day one, whether they're working with us, whether it's hiring us, or whether they're working for us. So we get that story out there so we don't have to explain, here's what we're doing and here's why we're doing it. They already know that because we're honest with everyone we interact with at all times. So ideally, they already know that. Then I've spent a lot of time on our mission and values. I've probably spent more time thinking through our values than anything else I've ever worked on my entire life. Just if, you, if I was boiled down just a single thing I've worked on, that's it. I've worked on a year and a half of just really thinking through hmm. what do I believe in, what does the company believe in, and what, what are, what's our operating system. Once you have that defined, then you can give everyone, the, then they know, okay, this is what I'm, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is how I'm supposed to act. Do I align with that on day one? If they don't, you know, hey, probably not for you. And, and then now while they're at our company, they can operate based on that operating system that's already been defined and explained and instilled and trained into them. I spend so much time talking about our values, talking about our values. When someone exemplifies one of our values, the first one to call it out, like, Lori the other day, she bought flowers for a partner of ours. Her dad's going through a hard time right now. So I, I saw on the credit card, you know, some flowers in San Francisco. I'm like, what's this? Like is someone buying flowers in San Francisco with our credit card? So I, I asked Lori, did you buy flowers? Yeah, I bought flowers for, for our partner. I didn't have to tell her mm. to be a friend, but that's one of our values. Be a friend. She was a friend. Mm. She was a, just going above and beyond for one of our partners, really caring for them. I Call that on the team call. Hey, Lori, thank you for being a friend. That was really cool of you to exemplify that value and reinforce that value. And most importantly, I need to make sure I live every single value 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I cannot skip out on a single one of our values, no matter where I do, no matter where I go, no matter who I'm talking to, no matter who's there watching me, especially when no one's watching me, I need to make sure that I am living that that, that culture first and foremost. So that's, that's really how we've done it so far. And how did you get, I talked to 45 year old, 55 year old business owners who still don't have the core values together. You're 25 years old. You've got your values. You spent a year and a half on them. You've got them dialed in. You're using them as filters for hiring and also for celebrating your team. What the conviction about values and, and being this dialed in on why they matter I mean, we're, we're preaching this all the time on this podcast. Yeah. When did you link up how significant that is? Because it's massive. Uh, my first year in business. So no one had, I, I never really had exposure to values before that. None of the companies I worked with had values. And the, the, the common values in construction are like integrity, safety, safety. respect. It's like, <laughs> right. what, what is Just integrity? Super like, generic. Yeah. How does that help me as a person? Like, I don't even know how to, what, what, you're just going to tell me to, to be integrity, like not, not mm. explain it. Not, so... Um, I, I, I identified that as one of the key problems in the industry, that there's no real values, no real purpose. So in, before I go tell companies that they need to value and purpose, I need to go do it myself. I need to practice what I preach. So that's when I started to dive into companies that I really, really respect, like, like Whole Foods, like the container store, like Patagonia. 
common thread between them all, they all stood for something higher than money and they all had a, an operating system. And they didn't just have an operating system, but it was unique to them. It was very well thought out. It was very well defined. And then not only that, but they trained on it. Mm. They hired on it. They fired on it. That was everything to them. And so I saw that and I said, okay, well, if all these companies are doing it, they're doing okay for themselves. I respect these companies. I look up to these companies. Well, that's what we're going to do too. So it's taken me a year and a half of really chewing on them, kind of living them, seeing where they they, they sit. Some people, I know they, they just wrote them down. Okay, this is it. Whereas I've had to really think through them, modify them, make them our own. And, and after we've kind of played around with them over the past year and a half, I think they're, they're dead on. They're a hundred percent now. I think that's the right way to do it. You know, when people just write them down to kind of complete an exercise so that they can have values, yeah, yeah you really miss, there's a lot of thinking that should go into it. Uh, why do I value this? What am I willing to walk away from business for? We talked about that earlier. Yep. You know, your inner core convictions uh, you kind of have to think through some of your own stories and experiences, even how you grew up, what you've always you know, cared about in the world, things that drive you crazy. Uh, a lot of thought should go into these to get to the kind of the central, this is what I really value. And I think taking time with that is, is really important. It's, it's, it's essential. I mean, it's like buying a shirt. You don't just, yep, that shirt looks good. I'll take it. You're going to probably go try it on. Like, Make sure it fits. Make sure you look good. Like that's mm. what you want to do with your values. You want to, okay, I, I think I like that. And then you want to go try it on. You want to go see how it plays out. You want to talk to people in your organization. You want to, it, it, we were small, but I involved everyone in the conversation. You know, hey, here's what I came up with. What do you guys think about this? Like at our first company meeting this time last year mm. with five of us at the time, we went through our values. And I remember one, we had work hard, play hard up there. You know, just, it's a common phrase. We all discussed, we were like, that's not really us, you know, and the, the more that morning, you know, three or four or five of us were up at five in the morning, you know, going for run in, in the cold, dark Nashville morning. Like, no, we just, we don't really play hard. We just kind of work and we're just, we're just quiet and we're just doing our thing. Like, that's not really us. So we're able to, yeah, let's, let's get rid of that. And let's, let's rethink that. Um, and now, you know, after after seeing how they played out, I, I couldn't be mm. happier about them. And I couldn't, Dan and I just talked about this this morning. We did a, a little internal podcast with, with him and I kind of recapping the year. One of the most satisfying, if not the most satisfying and gratifying thing about this entire year is not the money, is not the partners, not the, not even the impact. It's seeing our culture and our values start to really materialize and start to really take hold without me being there a lot of times. People just doing mm. things that I would like them to do without me ever having to even hint at it. It's just happening because we've spent so much time being intentional about it from yes. day one. And that's a big thing for me too is we're investing very heavily at the front end. We're spending a lot of time on that core foundation because we know we want to scale aggressively. And so we're preparing. I'm looking at it like we're already at that $100 million company. So I'm creating the infrastructure to accommodate that $100 million company. So when we grow to that, it's not, it's going to be painful, right. but it's not terrible and it's not excruciating. The well, whole you won't way. have to reinvent yourself to get there. No. Right? I mean, you got to reinvent your leadership. You got to transform personally, but you don't have to reinvent, like you're saying, the operating system. And so many companies grow in spite of not having an operating system. Yep. Then they get to 50, 100 employees and they're dying. I mean, they're not dying from a cash flow standpoint, but they're just, they're just bottlenecked on their growth and they're miserable and everybody's, there's all this infighting and nobody knows mm -hmm. what to do because they don't have that operating system. Yeah. And I think it's so key what you're saying, like get this thing early and then the fruits of that. I mean, the, the whole thing of like, people are making the right decision without me there. I'm coaching leaders all the time on this idea of advancing decision-making to the front lines. Because if you have to make all the decisions as the leader, you're screwed. Because the bottleneck on your business is going to be your calendar and your time, and that's going to run out. Totally. But if you can, what, what you're talking about is, hey, here's how you make decisions based on values. And so you, in a way, you have made the decision as the leader. You just don't have to be there to execute on the decision. Absolutely. Somebody's executing on what you value. Well, and one of our values is make decisions with, with an exclamation point. Mm. You are empowered. It's so important making decisions around here that it's a value. You're empowered to make 
decisions. You're not only empowered to make decisions, you're expected to make decisions. That's a basic expectation of working here. And it's accompanied with a quote by, by I believe it's Roosevelt. In any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is make the right decision. Next best thing you can do is make the, make the wrong decision. The worst thing you can do is make no decision. Hmm. So I try to educate people on if you're doing the right thing, if you're doing what you genuinely believe is right, it turns out to be the wrong thing, we're behind you 110%. So we'll go to bat for you every single time. I would rather you make the wrong decision and especially, you know, assuming you were doing what you thought was right, than make no decision at all. <laughs> 